Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. And today we are here with another one of our Catholic scientists that you should know about. Living proof that there is no conflict between religion and science, despite when some uppity atheists have told you. Uppity, it... uppity atheists, uppity evangelicals. Oh, fundies. And this one is a prime example of why everyone in Ohio wants to get as far away from Ohio as physically possible. And some of them <laughs> will even go to the extent of leaving the planet to get away from Ohio. So we're talking about Sister Mary Aquinas Kinsley. Ski. Kinski. Uh, she was born May 27th, 1894 in Zanesville, Ohio. I've been past there. Mm-hmm. And that sounds like a place you don't really want to be. I mean, well, yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's Ohio. Yeah, so the, yeah. It's Ohio, the but I mean, Ohio, it's universal. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and we really mean it. It's not just a bit. We really, seriously, <laughs> Ohio. Uh, all right, I, I'm going to mispronounce the city. So if you want to know where she died, she, she died on the 20th of October, 1985, in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I have not been past there, but I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we have little information about her family life growing up. It's probably that her family was Catholic, given that she quickly be- decided she was going to become a religious sister, but... Hey, listen, <laughs> we have certainty on when and where she was born, so we have to introduce at least some uncertainty. Her family? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Presumably she had one. Yeah. <laughs> so far as we are aware, none of them are saints. <laughs> anyway. And then, <laughs> she had a childhood. Yes. And at age 17, 17. she entered the novitiate... Of the Franciscan Sisters of Christian Charity, one of approximately three or four thousand Franciscan orders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, she was assigned to teach, and she studied in the at the Catholic University of America in D.C. Mm. And there, she got a degree in chemistry and physics. Wow! In 1926, and taught high school. She also later got a master's in electronics at Notre Dame, <laughs> and. Puppy. Puppy. <laughs> and around that time, she w- decided to be trained to become a pilot at the local county airport. Neat. Getting her license in 1938. Sure. And she then became a well-known pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, did anyone call her the flying nun? Yes. Yes, they yes. did. Uh, Take a- that, Sally Field. A- according to some stories, uh, she was um, teaching in high school the subject so of course what better way to teach about aerodynamics than you know become a pilot seriously <laughs> um because she also later on taught aerodynamics and the study of weather at saint ambrose high which was in ironwood michigan mm-hmm. but that was starting in 1942 so the different stories have different you know exactly why she wanted to become a pilot possibly to cover up the fact that she's from ohio and therefore wants to leave the earth mm-hmm. <laughs> And during World War II, she also earned a master's in physics. Um, she was known for taking summer classes at, at university because she, you know, taught during the school year. Yeah. And then, yeah, this this woman had a huge brain. Mm-hmm. Seriously. So she was asked to make an elementary school level program in science that could be used around the country by the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a very successful program. And it was thought to have caused many children to be interested in careers in science. Nice. She spent... Defeat the Red Menace. Yeah, she spent almost 30 years, part of the time, not like the entire time in 30 years, but throughout 30 years, Mm -hmm. traveling the U.S. promoting science education and what she called workshop learning, or what we would call like a Mm hands-on thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Her teaching philosophy... The the Lord himself taught us the dignity of working with our hands. Mm -hmm. Yes. Her teaching philosophy was said to be that the best way to teach children is to work with them instead of at them, which she used a lot. And also, she used it for teaching people who were not children because she trained military personnel teaching aviation in um, aeronautics, as well as training teachers to teach Mm -hmm. adult-level things. I can't teach all (laughs) y'all. Um, and she did this because the actual Civil Aeronautics Board asked her to. Nice. Uh, she also was known for inspecting aircraft factories and airports and doing demonstration tours, which part of it seemed to be that the government needed, you know, help to make sure everything was up to date. And some hmm. seemed to be, I'm teaching this. We're going to take a field trip to the local airport. <laughs> I'm 
I'm teaching you about aviation. <laughs> Let's see it in practice. Teaching with them, not at them. Um, she also helped make the pre-flight um, instructions that the military used during the war and mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you can get pictures of her from that time. There's a fair amount of them because they're all in the Library of Congress. As she was used as part of a PR campaign on women contributing to the war effort. We're all doing our part. So you get to go in. There's like a lot of pictures of like her and a bunch of, you know, fully habited nuns yeah. going looking at an engine or her like, you know, with the yoke of the thing and <laughs> pushing stuff. So there's, there's a Rosie the Riveter and then there's a bunch of hat nuns mm -hmm. in full habit. And Glorious. During this time when she was teaching the military people, yeah. uh, she was nicknamed the Fly Nun in Spike by the students. A good old name, Spike. So there is some talk that she is the one of the influences for the Flying Nun, mm -hmm. along with, of course, the, the medieval French giant hat phase. <laughs> it, it is funny when you look back at religious habits. because Giant they, starch cornet. And it was one of those things where, why is that their habit? Because when they were founded, that was the fashion of the day. And it just got frozen. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, the same applies to, you know, the chasuble father wears at mass. Yep. <laughs> um, and earlier when we were talking about another American in that case a American on the path to sainthood we, mm -hmm. we pointed out there was probably no one else who was going to be like made into a TV movie of their life played by a star she has one up that kind of because there was a TV show in which they did an episode on her and she played herself in it, along with a star of the day playing younger her. That's amazing! That's like Audie Murphy playing Audie Murphy in the Audie Murphy story. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, she also... Based on the book by Audie Murphy. Yes. She also was given a special citation from the U.S. Air Force for mm -hmm. outstanding contributions to the advancement of air power in the interest of national security and world peace, uh -huh. which she was given in 1957. I, I would say that her achievements seemed pretty outstanding. And that was the same year that she was the first Catholic nun to fly a jet. Nice. Uh, a few years later, she was the first Catholic nun to break the sound barrier in a jet. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were flying her somewhere, and they let her fly. <laughs> yes. I want to be the first Popish plotter to break the sound barrier. Nobody will let me fly a plane. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, there, there was a short time you probably could have, you know, possibly gotten away with being a passenger for my, my cousin, but, you know, he, yeah. he's retired from that now. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, missed, my win missed my window to, ride, to, to, to try and snag a ride with a, with a blue angel. <laughs> also, on, on first for this show, she was once featured in an article in Good Housekeeping magazine. <laughs> hey! In... The reason why we were joking about her being from Ohio, besides that as people from Michigan, we hate Ohio, is it's an ongoing joke that a very disproportionate amount of astronauts it's, are it's, from Ohio. It's not a joke. This is reality. It's serious. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. But I'm just saying the joke part is because people from Ohio all want to leave. They're so desperate. <laughs> as the, far as possible. They'll leave the whole planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, in the 1960s, she taught at Marquette U. And her students included NASA specialists who, you know, went there to get special training for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so she, she, she was not, you know, in NASA, but she trained the NASA people. Yep. And she was from Ohio, and and there are other quotes of her of basically, you know, you don't need to be afraid of flying in an airplane; it just gets you closer to God. Where it's like, see, see, she's trying to leave Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me go back. Don't make me go back. <laughs> in 1977, she finally retired simply because she had a stroke and therefore was well, not physically able to, you know. Well, if I'm doing my sums right, she's 83 at that point. Yes. So. It, Deser deserved to kick back a little bit. Yes, yes. Yes. And she still lived for almost another decade. She mm -hmm. just didn't spend her time traveling the country, breaking the sound barrier. Teaching, teaching full NASA time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. She had to relax a little bit. Yep. So she moved to her congregation's mother house, where she lived quietly for the rest of her days, until when she passed away, where she was famous enough that her obit was in the New York Times, along with, you know, other places. Because <laughs> she, she was technically a TV star. Yeah. <laughs> and a magazine star. <laughs> Sister Mary Aquinas Kinski. Holy smokes. 
That is quite a life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, as far as I know, she's the first any religious sister to break the sound barrier. But, you know, they didn't list it off. So, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure there's not like a Buddhist that, you know, broke it first. <laughs> I, I'm willing to posit that she was just she was the first religious to break the sound barrier, male or female. <laughs> Awesome sauce. So, comment below on what you found to be the single most impressive of the wholly impressive life of Sister Mary Aquinas Kinski. Was it that she got out of Ohio? <laughs> are you one of her? Are you a member of her family and might be able to give us more history <laughs> uh, 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 on her life prior to her seventeenth birthday? Are you from Zanesville? Could you check the local archives for us? <laughs> While you're down there, remember to go and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell next to it so you get notified when new episodes come out. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. And share, share that, that love. love. And also escape Ohio. <laughs> Run for your life. <laughs> if you can. Run too slow. <laughs> That's why they need jet power. Strap a rocket onto your butt. <laughs>